All right, we're here with all three of my worm bins. And what I wanted to do today was talk to you about the pros and cons of each of them and see if maybe one of these bins is what you're looking for in a worm bin. So let's start with the tiny worm bin. The tiny worm bin is one of my favorite bins because it is so small. It can fit anywhere under the sink, in a classroom, in an RV, college dorm, that kind of thing. The cost of them right now is about $25 for a three gallon tote, but I'm sure some of you have some of these lying around or perhaps you can get them a lot cheaper somewhere else. One of the good things about these is if you decide worm farming is not for you, you could use this for something else or what you had used it for before. It can also be used with a lid or without a lid and you can literally have this inside, outside, in a basement, in your garage. And because it's so small, you can start with fewer worms and you don't need to worry about producing a whole lot of food scraps to put in here. Now the cons. You can't really control moisture in it because there's a bottom to it with no holes. So you really need to watch out for moisture levels if you're feeding too much food, that kind of thing. The other thing is smaller bins like this can get out of whack. If you overfeed it, too much moisture, the worms don't really have a place to go to hide away from whatever you've put in here. So this bin is a fantastic bin, but it does have some cons. Now let's come over to the Vermi Hut. This bin is fantastic. One of the things I absolutely love about it is the moisture control. As you can see, it's a tower and down below there is a basin. So even if you put too much moisture in here or it's overfed or you spray it down and there's just too much moisture, it can flow down to the basin and away from the worms. Another good thing about it is it's sizable. Right now I have three trays on it, but you could have up to five. So if you want a more worms, bigger bin, you can do that. It is mobile, so you can lift it. Right now, this thing, I think when I weighed it, had four trays on it, was 42 and a half pounds. But if all you want is one or two trays, you can do that, it'd be much lighter. So each one of these trays is about 10 pounds. You can have a lid on it or without a lid if you wanted to. And sometimes if you're thinking that you wanna take care of the moisture right away, you can leave the lid off, but ultimately you don't need to worry about moisture with this. The other good thing about this is when you buy a Vermi Hut, it's gonna come with Cocoa Choir, it's gonna come with directions. There's a phone number on there you can call for support, which I have, and they were fantastic. This thing is kind of a start a worm bin and get going right away, all you gotta do is buy the worms. And speaking of that, you can start with 500 worms, you can start with 2,000 worms in this. This bin over here, one of the pros is actually, you can start with fewer worms, so if you're wondering about cost, fewer worms cost less. Now let's talk about the cons of the Vermi Hut. The big con is its cost. So right now I just checked and they're going for about $114, but right before Christmas I checked and they were about $60. So if cost is an issue, this may not be the worm bin for you. It's also only a worm bin. So you're not gonna take this apart and repurpose it if you decide that you're not gonna be a worm farmer anymore. This is it, it's a worm bin. Perhaps you can resell it. And then the other con is an occasional cleanup. Like I said, all that moisture can drain down to the bin. So if you're not someone that wants to have all that down there or worms get down there, which they do, then occasionally you're gonna to wanna to go down there and clean it up. And same thing with the lid, because the worms go everywhere. But both with this bin and with this bin, you're not gonna have any escapees. They've got a lid, it's tight, and I haven't had any problems with worms trying to escape. All right, now let's talk about the outside bin. This is another great bin. And one of the things that I love about it is its cost. You can buy a 20 gallon fabric pot. They come in groups of five for $25. So essentially one of these is just $5. So it's very cheap. It's also sizable. So this bin is a 20 gallon bin, but if you wanted to start small, you could do a five gallon fabric pot. The moisture control with these is one of their best features because this is just fabric and the moisture will go right through it. So if it has too much moisture or you over water it, not that you need to water it a whole lot, or too much food, the moisture is going to escape from here. It's also very mobile. In fact, I move mine around just to keep the critters in my outside yard wondering where this thing is. It can also be used as a pot. If you decide, hey, I don't wanna be a worm farmer anymore, you've got yourself another fabric pot for your plants. And this can be folded up for a lid and that's what I do. I just fold these parts in. In fact, I use two and then you got yourself a lid. All right, now for the cons. To me, this bin works best outside. In fact, you can see I've got a tarp underneath it because it is going to drain moisture if it needs to. 
So it's not something that you want to have on a shelf with nothing underneath it inside your house. The other thing is critters can get in it. Somewhere in here is a critter hole and it dug through and ate through part of the pot. And I'll link to a video that that happened with but I also occasionally will get ants, which is why I move it. I've seen lizards, frogs, that kind of thing in here. So this is not uh, quite critter proof, but all in all, this is a fantastic worm bin, especially if you live in some of the Southern states where you can keep it outdoors or in a warmer climate worldwide. All right, so now the question is, which one of these bins is good for you? If you're a brand new beginner with money to spend, then I would say absolutely go with the vermi hut or some other kind of worm tower. It comes with everything you need to start off except for the worms and it takes the worry out of moisture control. For me, this was a great beginner bin. If you're a beginner on a budget, then this bin is probably next to a worm tower, one of the easiest bins to maintain. And that's because again, it controls the moisture, which commonly is an issue for new worm farmers. All right, so what if you are a beginner and you can only have an indoor worm bin because maybe you're in a climate that gets really cold. Well, this is a perfectly suitable bin for a beginner. However, you're really going to have to be careful because a smaller bin can get out of whack, like I said. So you want to under moisturize, <laughs> if you want to call it that, to make sure that your bin doesn't get out of whack. And you can see from several videos that I have had this bin get out of whack, both with mites and potworms, that kind of thing. How about for an intermediate to expert? Well, then I would say go for any of these three bins because all of them are fun. This bin I love because I can just continue to feed it, continue to put bedding in, and every week I can take out casting. So for me, this is like a continuous flow bin, one of my best bins for my garden. This one is extremely fun because you can play around with the different trays. And right now I'm doing experiments with inoculating the trays down here first before I bring them up to be active feeders. And then this bin is an all around great bin because it can fit anywhere and I absolutely love it. So I hope this helps you decide which bin is good for you. I have enjoyed every single one of these. They all have their pros and cons, but I think out of these three bins, there's a choice for everybody. So I hope this helps you out and I hope you all have a great day. Happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.